Okay, and live. I'm not exactly certain if I'm going to be keeping this one up or not. I know it's kind of a goofy topic, but for long-ass fans of mine, I thought this might be kind of a cool thing to do. Uh, I've been doing a shit ton of spring cleaning all of a sudden, and uh, I'm waiting for some stuff to dry, and I also decided to get my car while I was spring cleaning, and for some reason, in the back of my car, all it's been in the back. The back of my car is a fucking time capsule. Uh, I saw the carbon fiber arrows for my, you know, my archery game, uh, in, in the back of my car. So I decided to clean all that shit out. And um, one of the things that I found back there was a package of my old t-shirts. Uh, anyone who's been a long time fan of mine knows that uh, my style has changed a lot. Obviously, I used to wear like a lot of like fan t-shirts. Oh, I hope I have the who in there. We'll see. We'll see. Because I don't remember. I had like up. I had a lot of t-shirts. I had like a good, you know, uh, upwards of like maybe 20, 25 different t-shirts that, uh, you know, all kind of changed um i had uh anyway a lot of them were banned video game um they weren't and they were a little bit higher quality than like your crappy walmart shirt that says like ford on the front or you know like whatever uh they a lot of them came from hot topic whatever that was just kind of that was the phase that i went through before i decided to start putting on suits and ties which i did for different reasons uh i was trying to cultivate like an e-character and um, I guess I kind of got lost in the sauce there, and then people started thinking that I was for really reals with that, and then I was just busy being a drunk and going out with my girlfriend, so I guess I will just stop doing YouTube videos. And I think part of the reason was also because like, I was detecting the cancer that was becoming YouTube, that was taking over YouTube. And I was right. I mean, I was right about that back in 2008. Uh, I was right about that in 2012 when I quit again, and I'm right about that shit fucking now. I just don't care anymore. But long story short, um, I got back into, or I got out of wearing the suit because I started doing more athletic things. I was running on the B&A trail. I started going hiking. And it's just like it was not ubiquitous to what I was doing. It's like if all your day is just getting up, going to get like a nitro brew coffee from uh, Barnes and not Barnes and Noble's, uh, Starbucks or whatever, you know, picking up a cigar and then like, you know, alcohol for the evening, but then also making a YouTube video where you're cringy and you have a katana and stuff like that, like, well, then you don't really need to not wear the suit. And the thing is, is, like, people at bars started notice knowing me as the guy who wears the suit. Um, one cool dude actually said, like, I was really like that, because, like, one time when I showed up with just, like, a polo on, because I would do that, sometimes I wouldn't feel like donning the full armor of God. Um, and I've even made some YouTube videos like that, <clears throat> where it was, like, I was still doing, like, you know, I was still in the suits phase, but at that point I was just, like, I think, like, one time I was sick, and I was like, nah, I'm just going to wear a T-shirt. I don't feel like dealing with it. So, um, and the guy was like, well, what are you doing? I didn't know the suit could come off. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, the suit can come off. And, uh, the package got busted open, so it's not airtight. So I don't know how clean these are, but uh, anyway, I was going to go through my old t-shirts one by one and talk about them. So anyway, like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep this up or not, but all right. The first one we got off the line, by the way, this is what the package looks like. I guess we should just cover that. There's more in there than you think. But we're not going to start with the Foxhound one. That'll be the end. I don't know. We're going to see how these come out of the damn package. And, all right. The first one off the line is my Oticon 2004 shirt. Fucking 2004 Oticon was the first year that I went to fucking Oticon. Um, terrible design. The Oticon shirts were always terribly designed. Like, they never looked good. I don't know what it, what it is about that company, but the Otacorp, but they never made good t-shirts. I'm not sure if the 2005 shirt is in here, but if it was, if it, if it's in there, it was cringy. All I can tell you is that it had a pocket. There is nothing more. That's like sandals and socks, man. There is nothing more dweeby than wearing a cotton tee that's got a, you know, a front pocket. Like if it's not a collared shirt, man, don't, don't, don't do, don't do that. Don't do that shit. By the way, guys, feel free to, I see there's six of you, feel free to comment. I'll talk to you about your comments. Like it's, I know you, you can type shit in. It'll help this live stream last. Tell your friends, go on Facebook and be like, the legend of Tolstoy is talking about t-shirts. Or fucking don't. I don't really care. I'm just burning up like a good 30 minutes waiting for some shit to dry and then I'm going to Swiffer. Let me tell you what Swiffer does. Fucking nothing, man. It's shit. Fucking Swiffer. 
Anyway, so yeah, um, I I wore this, but like this is kind of one of my dweebier shirts. Oh, also it's a large. I forgot when I went to when I went to large. Holy shit! When I first went to uh, Otakon, I was two hundred and twenty pounds or thereabout. I was a fat kid, man. Fuck. Okay. A lot of these are gonna end up getting thrown out or. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I, I'm not really into... I do like some t-shirts these days, and I do like some designs. Um, one of my favorites is, like, the ironic... Um, I don't know. The ironic gaming tee is definitely the styles worn the fuck out. Uh, Shivara, by the way, awesome name. Says, holy crap, Batman, my man Tolstoy. Yes, a thousand years ago. Fucking Max! Fucking Max is in the house, everybody. Let's all give a round of applause. To Max, who was one of my old co-hosts of a show that we will never, ever fucking talk about. And uh, he also sent me his fucking PlayStation 4. So literally, that helped get me through some, like, serious shit, man. I was in a really bad point in my life, and I realized playing video games can help, man. Because, I mean, part of me wants to be this person that doesn't take his pain meds, you know what I mean? As millennials, we are de dealing with some end-of-days-level shit. But that being said pain medication can help you. You know what I mean? Like one time back when my like leg was super injured, I needed to go on a hike anyway. And I asked the pharmacist that I work with, like how many fucking pills, can, how many of these, of these ibuprofens can I take? And they're like, man, don't exceed four. And I was like, five, you got it. Anyway, but long story short, uh, one of the things that I never do is play RPGs because I consider them a massive waste of time. It's like, if you're going to be that productive and do monotonous tasks, get paid for it, man. Get out there and make that bread. But that doesn't really factor into my yin and yang mentality, my Taoism. And recently, I went on to fucking, um, dude, uh, what's that? What's that? Um, Steam has just been taking all my money. I need to fucking, that's a, Steam is a drug dealer. Steam just be coming around going, oh yeah, I got that, um, I got that game you really liked when you were a kid. And I'm like, mm -mm, Steam, I'm going clean now. I'm clean and I don't need you. But I did need Steam. You know what they had for me? Morrowind. Fuck all the haters. Morrowind was the best goddamn game. And I just, like, I've been playing it for hours and hours. And ironically, I've been really productive recently. I've been doing a lot of decent workouts. I've started working on a tiered workout. Uh, that's a whole other thing. But today I've been just, like, cleaning and getting all this shit done. But I still got to get, still got to pay some fucking bills. God, I hate paying bills. But either way, Max, thank you for that shit. Uh, video games are the pain man and it is important. And he says, yo, Tolstoy, what up, boy? Not the much reviewing old t-shirts. That's the kind of quality shit you can tune in to Tolstoy for. Uh, he says, one day, I'm going to ninja stealth drop a switch into your house. We're going to, okay, listen, we're going to see. Fuck, I hate Nintendo. We're going to see. We're going to see how the new Pokemon goes. I have such a, I'm so wary. But just like a hungry coyote, man. I'm, you know, the, the, the man from Dances with Wolves is holding out the bacon. And I'm just... And smelling a bacon and thinking, is this safe to take? We'll see. We'll see. Mark74 Echo says, I have no friends, only my wife, who is laughing at me because I feel the mud while fishing. Because I fell in the mud while fishing today. Than not catching any fucking fish ever. I don't know what it is with me and fishing. Like, I'm not having luck, man. And I really need to get my survival game on point. Uh, never mind, I shouldn't admit to my thoughts. I would never think of using a net, which is illegal and not sportsmanly, but it would take a lot less room up in your backpack than a fishing rod, but okay, I would never do that. That is wrong. It is very illegal. <laughs> why, do, why are they taking the bait, but they won't take the fucking hook? I'm gonna get in that, and I'm just gonna whoop your ass with the fucking, with the, okay. Sorry, I've been cleaning all day, and I, I just, I've had another Red Bull, and it's, it's delicious. So anyway, uh, uh, hello from Central F Florida, says 19 Rappy. All right, man, Florida's, Florida's a thing. You ain't got no mountains, but send me a crocodile head. You actually have crocodiles now. Some idiot brought them into your environment and introduced them. I'm sure that's not going to greatly de debalance, destabilize fucking everything. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mark 74 Echo. Oh, man, I was a huge wow head back in the day. Yeah, I, I know, and that's the thing. I had a buddy I had a buddy who was really into wow, among other things, and um, I saw this, like, meme. He doesn't, he didn't really under, he doesn't do memes, man. Like, if you would show him pictures on your phone, he would just be like... <laughs> He, he doesn't he doesn't do that. He's very cultured. And uh, one day I saw this meme, and it's like someone taking a World of Warcraft disc and cutting up lines of cocaine with it. And I was like, oh, this is relevant and topical. He will like this. I sent that to him. He thought that was a picture that I had taken. <laughs> he, fucking, 
he like calls me and he's just like, all right, do one line right now. And then I'm going to tell you what fucking class you're going to make. And I was like, buddy, buddy, buddy. One, I don't have cocaine. Two, I don't have World of Warcraft. And he's just like, oh, I'm sorry, man. I thought you were going to have a really fun weekend. And I was like, fucking no. But um, I don't know. You know what? I'm, I'm starting to understand yin and yang, man. If you if you play hard, it might motivate you to work hard. It's like I do this sh dumbass shit where I starve myself and then I go to try to work out. And I'm just like, how come the weights aren't moving? And I just think to myself, like, because you didn't fucking eat. So you really got to think about it, man. You got to feed the feed the body if you want to make the lift, and you got to maybe feed your soul a little bit if you want to. You know what I mean? And it's like I'm usually not even into fantasy, and like ever. Like I just I'm not a fantasy kind of guy. I'm huge meat and potatoes, very dry. You know what I mean? I don't I like my I, I don't really like a lot of fantasy or sci-fi and a lot of the things that I consume. But for some fucking reason, the Elder Scrolls series, man, and I'm just like back into it. I'm just. Walking around this ugly ass environment with these ugly ass sprites that say "you and noir and shit like that. But this time I'm going for a different build. I always went for a giant barbarian build with a big old battle axe, but but this time I'm uh, I'm going for like what I am in real life, which is a dark elf with a bow and arrow and a dagger. And dude, I just run up and start going ee, 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 and sticking everything. It's all I fucking do. Uh, Clive Winston says, "Hell yeah, another Tolstoy stream." Yes, we're gonna be doing more of these. By the way, I should probably advertise this and knock everything the fuck over on my desk. I cleaned you. I fucking cleaned you. I cleaned this desk. You can't even lie to me about that. Um, fucking Spyro the Dragon action figure stream. Is it coming? Yes. Who is texting me right now? Whoever's texting me, you're in the stream. Well, it's Ken. Ken says, oh shit, trucks. Oh. I don't know, he's just texting me memes about trucks, Ken. I don't that's kind of non sequitur. But then again, so is everything. So uh stream. So anyway, yeah, the spyro. The spyro is is coming. I'm not sure when. I actually have a lot of content. I just decided to do this. Uh I did finish Stalker. I will be releasing the rest of that. I don't really like the way that it ended. So I'm I'm really demotivated uh, to do that. I did actually start Stalker Call of Creepy App, but I'm not even fucking not even recording it. I did not get the feeling that a lot of you were enjoying Stalker. So I'm a little bit weird to subject to that. I got some nature vids. I got some gear review. Got some books. Got some figures. The figures will be live. This is how we're doing it now. And I will just, because that's very innocent. You know, we don't we don't accidentally reveal ourselves as infidels if we, if we just do a Spyro the Dragon. All right. Do you, okay, well, uh, Ultimate X James. Whatever happened to Ultimate Z James? Would you do video game and movie reviews? Man, I, I did it like a thousand years ago. If there, you know what I'm, what I, but I never reviewed video games. What I did was I reviewed video game consoles that were like old and derelict. I was kind of like the AVGN. I'm not talented. However, I did do several consoles before AVGN did them. And, uh, well, uh, I, well, anyway, I never got anywhere near the views. But I'm not even butthurt because that was back, back before YouTube was altering the views. He was just more talented. His character was funnier than mine, so that's cool. Uh, if there was anything that would match that, I'm actually thinking about taking Patreon money and sinking it into the, uh, what was that one? That, the PlayStation Portable console that failed its ass off the portable, the PS Vita, the Vita, the Vita Vita Vegemin. I might sink some dough into that and just take the piss out of it, but then I'm literally stuck with that thing, and I just, I need to resell a whole bunch of shit. Dude, my, everything that I've got that I'm willing to get rid of, man, it's on its fucking way. Like, that box is now just full of shit. That I just need to get rid of, and I don't know how to fucking like. How, how do you how do you give people? You know, what I mean, how do you sell a fucking machete? It's a giant that giant Indian machete that I have. I don't fucking need that. This this I'm not even gonna get it. This sword sit. Oh yeah, you can see it. You can see the tip of the tonto. I don't fucking need this shit in my life. You know, I collected it when I was in you know the Bardo. Uh, Joel Celador, do you still wear, wear trench coats? I do. Sometimes I will wear the wool overcoat with my Beretta wool zip up. Uh, and my wool cap when it is just really cold. I don't know what it is about this state, but when it gets cold, even though it's not, it's the South, it's bad cold. I had somebody from Alaska walk, you know, tell me something. They were just like, yeah, but in Alaska, you can literally take your shirt off in 40 degree weather and it's okay. It has something to do with the, the, the you know, your cheese and your chakras and your, you know, anti-vaxxers. I don't fucking know. I don't get it. Max says, that's how I feel about fighting games. They help me get through a self-doubt phase because they promote improvement, not through... Eleven, I think it means leveling up, but it says Eleven, which is for like, I don't know why, I'm just on fucking, uh, but finally tuning your memory and skills, yeah, and then he corrects leveling, uh, what's your, Max, what was your favorite, are you a Tekken guy? No, man, you strike me as Super Smash, you're either Super Smash, or maybe, a, dude, try Pokken Tournament, 
If, um, I don't know if I ever told, uh, I mean, I think I did tell that story. I'm not going to tell that story about poking tournament again. Uh, fasted workouts or something else, man. Yeah. Tell me about it there. And then like when you start getting dizzy and you feel throwy uppy and you're like in the gym and you're just like, mm, don't lose space in front of special forces guys, because they are all special forces guys straight up, man. That is just what this area is meant for. All right. Uh, I will get back to reading comments. Let's continue on with what this original video was about. Hey, this isn't even my fucking shirt. This is some kind of sweater that this is from Walmart. It says Leonard Skinner. And honestly, there is nothing wrong with Leonard Skinner. Um, they're, they're musically a very talented man. They were. And you know what? Unpopular opinion. A trillion years ago on a road trip with me and this girl, she put on the album 21, which was 21 years after Ronnie Van Zant died. He was the leader of um, Leonard Skinner. For them, you young whippersnappers who don't know about them, they're Southern Rock. Uh, they went down in a plane crash. And that was what the movie Almost Famous was referencing, that point where they're experiencing extreme turbulation because that band, Stillwater, was very much kind of trying to be, it was a kind of a, an amalgamation of Leonard Skinner, Doobie Brothers, uh, uh, Outlaws, Eagles. They were kind of, it was trying to like kind of meme all of that. And uh, they did go down on a plane crash and they managed to kind of course correct and only one of them was well enough to drag his half, it was a stalker-esque you know, situation where just one of them was just dragging his, and I think his arm was immobilized, like broken bone showing through blood everywhere. And he hobbled up to a, a, a farmhouse where a farmer shot him with a shotgun because, and I quote, he was a long hair that was covered in blood. He was, a, he looked like a fucking hippie. And the guy had a shotgun. He fucking shot him. And uh, Ronnie Van Zant, the lead singer, did not make it out of that. And um, they tried to carry on without him. And a lot of people were like, well, that's not Leonard Skinner, man. But there's a really great fucking song. It's one of my favorite Leonard Skinner songs called Home is Where the Heart Is. And uh, honestly, they didn't, I don't think they missed a beat. I actually think that the the still rolling Leonard Skinner is a good band. Um, fuck yeah, I just saw the next the next t-shirt in line. Uh, yeah, B. All right, but first let's read some fucking comments. I'm going to milk this shit for all it's worth, he says, making the weird jerking off symbol. And then everyone is like, ew. And I'm just like, hey, yeah, it, that is disgusting. Uh, do do Max says, I'm getting high on the climbing game now since there's a climbing gym near my apartment. Hey, fucking quit wasting time and come here. We probably have 10 times the goddamn climbing gyms. There's no mountains in Florida. What are you doing? Come here and belay for me. But don't be better than me. That'll just make me feel bad. <laughs> What's your, what, what level are you at, bro? I'm at five. I've kind of creeped my way back up to five, eight. Um, never skip leg day. That's all I can tell you. I have no idea why I was able to do like five nines before and I dropped down like to five, six, but I'm back up to five, eight. So bro, it's amazing, dude. Fucking get up here, bra. Mark says, oh, and three small mouth bass caught one kept. Well, fucking come up here and show me how to catch this shit. You have, you have the codec ringtone too, my boy. Yeah, I do, dude. I've had that for like the longest time. And I remember a normie girl that I was working with didn't know what uh, what that was. But the one dude did. It was like this cool black guy that I worked with. And he heard the, ring, ring, of the, of the Metal Gear Solid ringtone. And he was just like, where did you get that? And I was all like, yeah, here, I'll, I'll text you the, the file somehow. I don't remember how I gave him the file. And he was like, oh, right. And then as he walked away, it started going off like mad because I was like texting this one girl. and uh, But I was also dating this other the, I, we never, nope, I never did, I never betrayed the trust of my significant other, despite the fact that she was a bitch that was driving me fucking crazy, crazier, um, but still, and, but the girl, the girl that I was working with was like, phone going off, and she's like, wow, your girlfriend really wants to talk, I was like, no, nah, that's not my girlfriend, she's like, well, who's that, I was like, eh, that's not a girl, and she was like, and who is that, and I was all like, my girlfriend's understudy, and like, the fucking shock in her eyes, like, she was just like, it just harmed her in the hindbrain. She was just like, Wee! it was just autistic screeching because she was like, well, anyway, we will not go further into what that shit was like. All right. Are you fucking ready? I'm actually, this is one I'm going to keep. So far, we, we haven't gotten any keepers, but this is one that we're fucking keeping. Yes. The fucking who t-shirt. Doesn't smell. It smells like my car, like cigarette smoke and, and a car that breaks down a lot and depression. So. The fucking who, man. One of the other greatest band. Oh no. The way that it was bent, the sun, the sun was exposed to it at an odd angle. So that's not a fold. That's just sun bleaching. 
No, it's kind of ruined. Ah, fuck me. The sun is a powerful entity. I'll actually show you what the sun has done. I'm a little bit fucked up about this, but hang on, hang on. Stay with me, people. Stay with me. I better remember to roll that shit back down, else the sun is gonna wake my ass up in the morning. Oof. That's right. So, as you can plainly see, this side of the Ito has been bleached, and this side is kind of gray, but right here, it lost a shit ton of coloring. Jesus. However, surprisingly, the blade itself is not rusted over. This is still very much a Kirtana. I was never good with this thing. It's too short. It's very unbalanced, actually. I was working much better with the other one, which is a tactical katana. But if you're fans of mine, you already knew that. This little uh, rack, though, that I have it on is insanely unstable. And I have no idea if it's going to hold the weight every time I put it down. I really need to either get a new one or move the damn swords. But either way, the sun ain't nothing to fuck with. And I just realized that the I gotta roll down the shit again, otherwise my face won't be in lock. Don't you dare. It'll knock all of them off. Hey, fuck you. Fuck you, Jedediah. You fucking asshole. Okay. Yeah, I gotta remember about the lighting. Somebody explained it to me that the lighting in the background will cause my face to not be in focus. I mean, I know that this is already of very shitty quality, but The Who is one of my favorite fucking bands. Recently, when I've been getting into meal prep, I've been listening to, do I have it here? I don't know where I put it, but my phone is usually charging because it's, it's old, so the battery drains pretty quickly, and what I've been doing is using my old Sony mini disc player, of which I loaded with a shit ton of classic rock, which when I was a kid was like... That was all like a treasure trove of good music that I had never heard of before. And uh, The Who played greatly into to my, to my tastes, man. I fucking, <sighs> fucking love their styles from their, their, their English R&B to their weird, like, I wouldn't call it progressive rock, but, well, uh, Tommy. Anyway, but The Who. This was always a super soft, high-quality t-shirt, too. Gosh darn, there's no way to get that sun bleaching out, I don't assume. It can just be a gym shirt. I don't know. I also have too many fucking shirts. I have too much stuff. I'm trying to, every time I clean, I, I, want, I tend to want to purge. Just like, you know, do, what, do I, what else can I get rid of? What else don't I fucking need? I just keep on looking around. I mean, I really don't have that many possessions to begin with because I'm a poor millennial. But, anyway, read some fucking comments here. Mark says, if I'm ever in the area, I'll definitely hit you up if work ever takes its death claws out of me. Yeah, well, tell me about it. Uh, dude, make a vid like the literary recommendations one, but for music. I did. A trillion years ago, I made a rock opera collection video. Like, no, it was like my fourth video. I'm dead serious. And I think I'm wearing that t-shirt, but who? I'm pretty sure. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Are, uh, are, am I back in Maryland now? No. I cannot afford to live in Maryland, friends. I need to go back to see them. It's on my to-do list. I feel terrible. I, I don't alien. I try not to alienate people, but I have a tendency to kind of just drop off the face of the earth for a good number of people. You know what I mean? Like I just don't talk to people for like months and months and years. But then like I do eventually want to see them again, and it's just it's hard for me to to work that out. Uh, at the Geeker, nah, he's still an MC. Indeed, I've been watching your videos since two thousand eight. I'm very sorry to hear that, but then you'll remember most of these teeth that we're going through. All right, the next one. I don't know if the next one is going to... I don't know what we're doing with the next one. Oof. Oh, did they all get sun bleaching? Yeah. they kind of, Unless they were black, they kind of all did. Mash. Oh, no. It's too big. I remember this was one of my shirts that I had when I was a fatty. It'll look ridiculous on me now. Dude, look at that. Look how big that shirt is in co by comparison to me. Look at that. Criminy, I could use it as a fucking. I guess I'll have to give it away. I guess it's good. Mash four oh seven seven. Um, I grew up on Mash, man. When I was a fucking kid, there were just certain shows that just showed in serial because they had had so many episodes made of them and they had made it to syndication, and so it was like on you know whatever channel, Fox or WB, whoever the fuck was playing it. Um, we just play these like 
two a day. That was kind of how I saw Star Trek, the original series, when uh, Sci-Fi Channel brought it back, back before they were just total shit as a network. And uh, I would, yeah, and I would, you know, watch that with my dad. We'd watch a couple Star Treks. We'd watch a couple MASH. It was good family bonding time. Uh, I was always a fan of the second half of MASH. The first half was goofier, and uh, I think once they let Alan Alda take over, that's kind of, that is a very Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2 and 3 versus first half of MASH, second half of MASH division. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw the insult out ten more goddamn times. Uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 is a dumbed-down Metal Gear Solid that's made for, you know, art hards who didn't, who played Metal Gear Solid 2. And we're just like, huh? Where's the explosions? I need more explosions in muscles! And they were literally the thing that Hideo Kojima was satirizing with the character of What's-His-Face, uh, Jack, uh, uh, Ryan. Um, the first half, I find that older boomers and people who are a little more <whistles> tend to like the first four seasons, first five seasons of MASH because Alan Alda wasn't writing and so it wasn't more dramatic and uh, the jokes were more, it was more <laughs> jokier. Near the second half, you start seeing some real shit. Uh, actually, that's, that will last with me, the imagery, you know. I don't remember the yuck yucks. I remember the, the imagery. Um, the one episode where the soldier is dying and by the end he's actually dead and he just gets up off of the gurney and he walks out of the fucking hot tent out of the hospital and he walks into a field and his unit that died is waiting for him. His captain's got his helmet in his hands and he says something like, where are we going, Captain? And his captain says, I don't know. And he puts the helmet on and they just decide to walk off in the distance. That was the most fucking comforting depiction of death I have ever fucking encountered. Like, I just always hope that seems so right that your tribe is waiting for you and you all just walk and they like walk into the misty mountains of Korea. You know what I mean? That's some fucking shit. Um, so, I don't know. I feel like there's that division of MASH. You know what I mean? There's the people who... Did, and, and also, there's the people over the pond in England who got the good version of MASH, but they didn't have fucking canned laughter. Uh, the canned laughter kind of ruined it. You know what I mean? They, but th that's part of what fucking network network execs do. They have to... They get. They say, oh, could it be better if we put canned laughter in there? So, yeah. Um, I would like to go back and rewatch it. I've rewatched several episodes. It's really old now. However old it was when I was a kid, it's super old. And I, I kind of even find, find it difficult to connect with the characters now, ironically. When I was younger, I was like, oh, that makes sense. Eh, anyway. But um, if you, I don't think it's on Netflix. You can probably find it. I think you can find it a lot on YouTube. But um, yeah, still, which is strange. Do -do -do -do. Switch from real books to a Kindle. I did, and clear up a lot of room. No. Yeah, well, you can't exactly, you know, Kindle requires batteries, and the batteries don't ever run out on a fucking, you know, on a, I know, it doesn't take a lot of batteries, but, hey, look, I don't have a lot of books. I give away what, most of the books once I'm finished reading them. I just finish Into the Wild, and I actually have a video that's coming out about that. It's all shot and edited. It's just, it's going to take time to, for me to upload it, and um, I gave that to my, my hiking buddy, Hal, so I was just like, read this. This, this dude is like us, and so, yeah. Uh, Maxwell says, Street Fighter, Tekken, Soul Calibur, virtually any fighter made by SNK, fucking Samurai Showdown up in here. Also, yes, I am a Nintendo fanboy, and I do enjoy Smash Bros., but not as deep as it as into it as other weirdos. And I watch this whole thing about, apparently, just every Super Smash tournament has a horrific smell. It's just like, no, like, that's a thing in the industry. You know what I mean? It's just, it's gonna happen, man. Um... Love, love MASH. Still refuse to watch the final episode. Have you not? Have you? Do you? You've never seen the final episode? Do you not know what happens? Oh, wow. Okay. We won't even talk about it. Fuck. Spoiler alert for a literal 30, 40 year old show. I know Max would love. Yeah, of course he loves fucking well, MASH because he's cultured and shit. I love old TV shows, but I've never seen MASH. Always confused it with Hogan's Heroes. Oh, Hogan's Heroes was the stupid version of MASH that stupid people liked. It, it, well, I was about to say it was the Sam Fisher to, to Metal Gear Solid, but you know what? Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell series is not a bad series. It's probably more politically informed and down to earth. I don't know why the motherfucker ages backwards, but I've never played the whole games, but I'm not going to sit here and say that Tom Clancy's writing it is it infinitely better than Kojima's? And a lot of people in my, uh, my review of the Death Stranding uh, trailer were like, why are you so negative about it? Son, are you attempting to act like any of this is normal? He has a limited edition of the game that's going to come with the wacky fetus tank. 
Stop. Stop normalizing his behavior. It's not good for him. I'm dead serious, man. I don't know why we have this fucking scared straight mentality about this, but I'm like the counselor that's telling you, you know what I mean? That like, you know, well, Jason just likes to smoke pot and drink and drive sometimes. Yeah, well, Jason's going to fucking end up getting arrested and spending time in county. So maybe slap the shit out your son and fucking tell him. I mean, I'm just saying, like, this shit's fucking weird. Let's acknowledge that it's fucking weird. I just, I don't know, man. No, I, I highly doubt that this game is going to be good. I don't know. Being negative. What, what's the good side about it? That there's going to be a mini game where you can play patty cake with the fetus? The fuck is this shit? I'm dead serious, man. I'm dead fucking serious. Um, do 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 do. I remember the Bioshock reviews. I've been around for a long time. What did you think of Bioshock Infinite? I don't think you ever talked about it. Ooh, yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, I talked about it on the podcast. That which shall never be named. That podcast don't exist, son. That shit. All the copies of it ended up in Indiana Jones's little box, and it got put in that room that says "Do not fucking open." Um. Okay, I don't know if this is a screen for it. I have two. I love Ken Levine. I loved Bioshock. It was one of the greatest games ever made. Bioshock Infinite was a dumbed down Metal Gear Solid 3 esque. You know, it appeals to a wider audience, lowest common denominator shooter. But that being said, it was still an amazing fucking game. And I think you can get away with the plot not being anywhere near as apt a social commentary because. It was based off the writings of L. Frank Baum. The original were commentaries on Ayn Rand. This was a commentary on Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz is a fucking child's book. So if the plot is simpler, if the visuals are crazy and magical, and you're just like, well, why do they have weird, sentient, steam-powered robot, you know, stuff? It's it's the it's literally there's a fucking floating city. It's supposed to be the Wizard of Oz. There's a very, very clever and very light, not heavy-handed allusion to that in the scene where Elizabeth goes, yeah! and creates the biggest goddamn terror ever, and you can see that there's a farmhouse on the plains of middle America with a twister coming at it. I'm like, okay, that's pretty fucking clever. That being said, uh, I think that the the DLC for it, where it wrapped it all together and put it all in one universe, was really amazing. I recently watched a, a video where some dude was taking the shit out of it and saying, well, it wasn't good because XYZ. No, it'll never be as good as Bioshock. <laughs> one of his main complaints is that it retconned Bioshock, too. I mean, yeah, you talking about the one that was AIDS, the terrible game, the worst game in the series, number two? You sure? Oh, that, that's, that's why it's bad, because it retconned that. And don't get me wrong, there were, par there were parts about Bioshock 2 that were actually redeeming. The best part about Infinite is that it kind of excuses any of the stupid potholes of the entire series because we just go multiverse in the same way that, like, Kojima just says, I'm not saying it's nanomachines, but nanomachines. So I really enjoyed the game. One of my favorite games, I don't think it's a good game, but by comparison to the rest of the series, in the same way that Bio, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 is not the best fucking Metal Gear game, but it's still a really good game. So, I, and I really like it. So, you know, same. Also, I was insanely drunk. That was, uh, and that was back when the drinking was amazing. I could black out, but it doesn't fucking matter because it felt so good and I could still play video games really well for some fucking reason. And, um... I was just an amazing time in my life. I was only working, I think, like part time because I was kind of super depressed and I had just lost a job. So, uh, yeah. Do, do, do. All right, we'll read the rest of those comments. Let's keep it fucking moving. Speaking of Metal Gear Solid, super topical because one of the cringiest shirts of all fucking time is it upside down? Yes, it is. Do, 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 do. More t shirts are changing. They're no longer about logos, but about trying to look like a fucking adult. Do, do. I, I can't really put him up where you will see him. That's not how this that's not how this shit works. Okay. Maybe I can. All right. That's where he's going for now. So I think I bought this right around the time that I bought Metal Gear Solid 4 because I was riding that hype train and I saw this in fucking not uh, where did I see that? Uh, I saw it in uh Hot goth topic, and I was just like, hell yeah, I picked that shit up. It was good. It was good shit. Um, bum, 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 reading some more comments. Your opinion is irrelevant because Metal Gear Solid 3 gave Boss my favorite character. Okay, like I said, it can have redeeming elements, which is that it has good characters. But one, her American voice actor was god-awful. All of the voice acting in that was wonky fucking awful for some reason. It was all really super campy. I mean, Metal Gear has never been fucking high art. It's never been, you know, I don't know, Citizen Kane, but it was better than that. The Twin Snakes was better than that. Maybe, okay, uh, we're not going to go that far. 
But anyway, yes, Boss was a great character. Like I said, it's not, it's just the worst in the series. Oh, except for Metal Gear Solid 5. <laughs> well, but no, none of them in the series except for Ride and Revenge, it's Retardation, and anything else that Konami's going to pump out now were really bad games. It's just of all of the games, that one I consider to be the worst. And for the reasons that I've stated a million times, as long as we're all doing it, I've been watching since the Practical Ninjato review. Fuck, I gave that sword to some friends for their wedding. It was the weirdest. Uh, it was the weirdest gift ever. I, I, they weren't asking for gifts. They weren't people who just needed a gift. I was just. I promised to them. Promised it to them in my will. It's a really weird thing to reveal, but uh, I found that making a will really helped me in a time of mental instability. Yep. I actually also promised this to Zach. If I can ever find a way to get it to him, this was my first sword, and it does not have an actual edge on it, which is why I never reviewed it. But this is the sword that I'm using, that meme. That was, I took that picture before I realized that this sword can't actually cut, and I put it on my Facebook, because back then I was using Facebook as an advertisement for, hey, come see my YouTube channel. Um, back when I didn't think that the internet was serious business. And uh, everyone misinterpreted what that was, and now I'm a fucking meme. Because, you know, tips hat and fedoras and milady. Because if you hate on people... Uh, that if you basically take people and you use them for memes to make them into a puppet so that you can make them act in a cringy way that they never really acted, then you can feel better about yourself because you're too much of a beta to do push-ups. That's what, that's what that is. That's what that is. Uh, for fucking real, man. That's that negativity, man. I don't feel that when I'm working out. I don't have to hate on other people. I don't go around. When I was the most insecure about my life, I went around hating on everybody else and being a negative Nancy all the time. Now I don't. Now I literally don't give a shit. If you really don't fucking give a shit, you don't have the need to go around making fun of other people randomly on the internet for a pick me up. I know that that sounds very camp counselor, but just coming from someone who is uh, refined and urbane and in their thirties and has, you know, has has lived. Uh, now I'm middle aged, so as you can see, now I I don't even you know comb my hair anymore. It's just the receding hairline. But it, thankfully, it's noble. It's a noble receding hairline, so I'm okay with this. You see this, ladies? This says that I'm experienced, and uh, I'm a middle-aged man. I have a little bit of touch of gray. You really can't see that. But what, what it doesn't say is that I'm broke as shit, and I rely on my parents still. So, bitches don't care about that shit. Keep it moving, people. Keep it moving. You remember the discount beat em on review? What was that, like, review number four? Jesus Christ, this person's 30 with me. The Dragon Slayer Show. What the fuck are you, 32, son? Uh, and Winston says he does. I remember, I wonder if he still has Morpheus. Of course, I never got rid of Morpheus. Son, that's Morpheus. Look behind me. Look at that. Bing. That's Morpheus. That's the big daddy. That's, that's a skull. That's Buddha. So, if he wants to get rid of it, he can send it my way. Nope. Which one are you talking about? The, the machete? Look, here's the problem. I would. I can't send things anonymously. I don't want people knowing where I fucking live. And even if I got a post office box, I'd have to put my name on it. You can't be like, Deep Throat, Mr. X, on packages. The United States Postal Service doesn't find that shit fucking amusing. Uh, Anthony Saucedo says, hello, hello. I assume that's how you pronounced it. Generic Coyote, sup? Been watching since the years of your Half-Life figure review. One of the ones that made it through the purge. The Half-Life. God damn it, Gabe Newell. I fucking hate you. Every day. I am reminded of my hatred for Gabe Newell and the fact that we're never getting Half-Life 3. So this is going to be an interesting one. Buddy, who else remembers good fucking Charlotte that's, it's also, is it just dust or is it bleached? I don't have any water. I can't. Uh, it's sun bleaching. Damn, damn, double damn. And most of these t-shirts are ruined. Oh, well, I don't give a fuck. Fucking Good Charlotte, man. So, Good Charlotte is a band from Waldorf, Maryland. Um, but they rep out as being from D.C. Uh, but they also played a free concert once in Annapolis High. And uh, I've actually, uh, I've been to Annapolis High. Uh, I didn't go to Annapolis High, but I've been there. So, uh, yeah, um, everybody in Maryland thought that I was dumb for wearing that shirt to high school. And freshman year, I got picked on. And everybody called me unsightly names because I wore a Good Charlotte tee. I don't know what the hate was concerning Good Charlotte. I like them as a pop punk band. I don't know what, where the hate for pop punk comes from. But when I got down here, I found out that all these good old Southern boys who were my age, you know, that I was working with, 
they all fucking like pop punk. And they're like, you like good Charlotte? And I'm like, the fuck? And uh, that shit blew my fucking mind, man. I met some people. I'm like, yeah, I like good Charlotte, man. And they all like, um, uh, they all like Blink-182 and uh, fucking The Offspring. So my angsty fucking teen face where I had a good fucking Charlotte team. Excellent. Do, do, do. More comments. Ever since I found out about how Colonel Hogan died in real life, I can't watch Hogan's Heroes. How did he die? I'm not aware of this. Um, I spent a ton of time just walking around Columbia. I love the look in the feel of the city. I love Bioshock and the book Bioshock Rapture. I skipped Bioshock 2. I would go back and play Bioshock 2. It is a clusterfuck, but there were certain things in it that made it redeemable. And again, if you just look through the, the lens of, well, this is a universe where this didn't happen, but, you know, or whatever, it, it's okay. Take a rip off a blunt or get really drunk. It'll help. It'll help. Um, yeah, me and my buds do drunk souls, and it's excellent, says Clive. Very topical, Clive. Very good. Very good. I do see Morpheus. I had to squint. Yeah, he's a tiny Morpheus. The true fans know your real name. Zach and Mike said it at the dinner at a movie vid. Okay. Well, now I'm going probably back to erase that. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, there's a lot of people with my first name. Not as many people with my address. Okay. Uh, have I seen Avengers Endgame? No, I don't like fucking superheroes. So I don't give a shit about any of that hype. I didn't give a fuck about, uh, about uh, what's that other thing called? Fucking Game of Thrones. But I heard it's Game of Trolls. And I laughed my ass off when I found out about how all the fans got fucking trolled. Shit was hysterical. Next t-shirt, and this is going to be the cringiest fucking t-shirt. I can't believe and believe that this is my t-shirt. I don't even believe I ever fucking wore this t-shirt. I don't know where the fuck I might have gotten this for Christmas. That makes a lot of sense. Fucking Rorschach. Look how ugly that design is. Look at that fucking busy-ass design. Look at it. Look at it. The design is tipping its fedora. Not that fedora. Just the design has a fedora, and it's tipping it. Holy shit, that is an ugly t-shirt design. I don't think I ever wore that. Uh, do, do, do. If you're interested in Christopher McCandle, McCandless, I could never figure out how to... I suggest checking out Ron Lemuth's documentary and his website. Krakauer took literally license in Into the Wild to the point of flat-out lying. No way! You gotta be kidding me. Krakauer wouldn't lie. He's a journalist. Oh. Well, he went on Mount Everest. I like Jonathan Krakauer. You know he's a fucking boomer. Ha! Are you sure? Examples. J. Watterson 69. I need examples now. Uh, what numbers are we on, my dude? I don't know what number we're talking about. Half-Life fans will never get over how Half-Life 3... will never get over Half-Life 3, but to be honest, I'm long over it. Yeah, well, I'm fucking not. We can still do terrorist actions on Gabe Newell's office until the fat fuck decides to give in. Anyway, like three or four. Like three or four what? Number what? What are we talking about? Okay. Appreciate it, Clive. Um, Clive says, hey, man, no problem. Uh, I know that Half-Life 3 feeling, I'm an EVA fan, still waiting for a rebuild of Evangelion. I have no idea what that means. Uh, I can see Tolstoy's right. MGS3 is the worst in the series. Uh, worth a Google search. Bit of a conspiracy theory in a gay way. Lol. Whoa, Hogan's Heroes? Oh, bro. Whoa, you got a fan, bro. Not cool, man. Not cool. I got a fan. Anytime. That's sick, dude. You ready for HBO's Watchmen sequel, Tolstoy? No, fucker. I'm not going to watch that shit. Um, no. I don't know. Who are they making it for? HBO is normies now. Fucking normies watch Game of Thrones. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I'm, look, I don't know how I feel about it. Alan Moore kind of went off the fucking deep end, man. <laughs> Like, I just don't know how to feel about that shit. I know that they made the Watchmen prequels, sequels, whatever the fuck it was. And I saw that in comic stores as it was coming out. And I just shook my head and was like, why? why? Stop milking it, man. You know, don't fucking milk it. So, next t-shirt. Man, I have way too many Metal Gear Solid tees. I must have bought this off of eBay because there is no way this is officially licensed. It is an ugly-ass shirt design. It is ugly as fuck. It's probably going to my brother. It's ugly as fuck. Okay, hang on. Oop. Oh, I gotta wipe my nose. Oh, fuck. Oh, there we go. All right, read some fucking comments. 
number of t-shirts. Evangelion 3.0 was a te was terrible though. I, I don't know. I've never seen Evangelion. EDC Gunner. Have you played Metro 2033? I'm going to be talking about it in the book. Yes, I've played Metro 2033 and Last Light. They're okay. They're stalker light though. You know what I mean? It's like there's nothing by comparison to stalker. Sorry. Just the, the narrative ain't all that good. The narrative is like kind of nothing by comparison. It is just it is light beer version of stalker. Oh my god, I could go for a light beer right now. Gotta drive them alcoholic feelings away. Uh, they couldn't get more, so they settled on Dave Gibbons to help with the sequel. Dave Gibbons was the artist. Did he write? Was he just like, so what I'm thinking we do is like, no! Uh, no, no. Not over the fact you not a Game of Thrones fan. Go. Go now. Watch it now. You will like it. No, I, I've watched like... That's actually... I was going to make a video about the history of the origins of political order by Fukuyama uh, and uh, how basically the whole Game of Thrones thing, just it's nothing but a bunch of patrimonial elites vying for kingship in a horrible, shitty, feudal system that reminds me of uh, either China or Russia's history. Fuck that noise. Fukuyama already lays it out for you. The whole patrimonial feudalist fight was already decided by England, which turned out to be a the biggest power player in Europe, probably near the end of you know near the end of the feudal era in Europe, due to the fact that they had a higher rate of taxation. And why did they have a higher rate of taxation? Because people were actually willing to pay the taxes. Why were they willing to pay the fucking taxes? Because they had the parliament, which was the earliest form of kind of you know uh, feudal democracy. And underneath the parliament, they had the hundred, which was essentially like local city fucking council. That's how advanced they were. And they had a fine balance of strong central government, but the strong central government was also held accountable by the patrimonial elites, which you know, they're always going to be there, uh, as well as a you know voting base of gentry that was sort of created from the working class. And that is why... Those motherfuckers were, God literally gave the go-ahead to Queen Elizabeth, I, was either Queen, I think it was Queen Mary, and dealt with that fight in between the Spanish Catholics who were attempting to Catholicize, you know, England. And, like, they had a whole armada of ships, which is, like, two ships that the English had who were, like, essentially, they weren't even Protestant. They were just not going to take a side. I could go on for hours and fucking hours. I actually, um, one of the girls who was running the smoothie bar at the gym, I see she has this textbook open, and I'm just like, what are you, what are you, what are you studying, man? And she was like, oh, Middle Eastern politics. And I was like, really? I'm reading Peter Frankopan's uh, The Silk Road. So, you know, a history of, uh, anyway, uh, you know, the history of, as, of the entire world as seen through the focal point of the uh, the Silk Roads in the Middle East. And, man, we got on our fucking sociopolitics game, and, and she was hot. But she had to drop her political. She had to like. She wasn't keeping it funny. She was just. She, she mentioned like Trump three times. And I was just like, hey, hey, come on, girl, come on, don't do that. Come on, baby, come on, girl. You know what I mean? Don't, don't, don't fucking just keep it funny, Stephen. Um, yeah, man. <sighs> fucking patrimonial elite jerk off show. I actually believe it's literally fucking Hollywood psychological operation to get us accustomed to the idea of patrimonialism and feudalism so that we'll just accept it when the elites roll it the fuck back out. This is what made the Jones crazy. Here we go, making the making me fucking go crazy thinking about that shit because there's this PSYOP, and I've noticed this also, Game of, not Game of Thrones, um, uh, Walking Dead was also like this. This lie that essentially, and I'm on Descartes' kind of rhythm with this, and... Uh, Francis Fukuyama talks about this. All these or, you know, philosophers from back in the 1500s who were like, well, what is the origin of the structure of humanity? And basically, there were people who were like John Locke who believed that society kept man from being savage. And there were people like fucking Descartes who were like, no, society empowers people to be fucking savage. I, I don't remember the Native Americans were being able to carry out genocide to the tune of fucking millions, but I remember the communists and the Nazis being able to do that because when you get a bunch of fucking people together and whip them up into political fervor, that's the fucking shit that happens. And essentially, there's this psyop that a lot of these shows are painting, which is that one, without the gobi, we'll, we'll fucking go back to eating each other and it'll, the, the psychopaths will rule everything. And I'm like, no, because of the gobi, the psychopaths rule everything. And then there's Game of Thrones, which is like, isn't it great? Psychopaths rule everything. And I feel like that's part of our social degradation where we have glorified this psychopathy and we act like being a sneaky little Machiavellian turd is the 
the you know the height, the epitome of the human experience. Fuck that noise, man. Fucking that's what I liked about Lost. Lost was one of the greatest shows ever made because it literally shows what happens when a bunch of people ended up on an island. Yeah, in the first season, there was drama. There was even racism. And guess what? Those two people eventually ended up being best friends because ultimately, without any gubby around to incite, without the sneaky spiders being able there to control people's thoughts with the media and the fucking government, people just kind of got over their fucking drama and worked together. You know, like as fucking the doctor, um, Jack says, look, we can either live together or die alone, you know? And they're like, all right. And then some people start working on the raft. And like the one dude who was like uh, the construction worker from New York is shouting at the Korean guy. No, man, you can't. Do, you you got to tie it like this. Tie it like this. And he's going, tie it like this. Tie it like this. Let's go. And they're, 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 they're mad at first. But by the end, they're besties. Shit was cash, fam. I'm down with this, um, this fucking neo-primitivistic anarchist future, man. That's what. God damn. That Red Bull was a good fucking Red Bull. Not sleeping tonight! So I will read more. Speaking of famous works by famous anarchists, Watchmen. This is a much less cringy design. Ah, much fucking... Ooh, you know what? Except for it doesn't really need the... I don't like the lettering. You didn't need the lettering. Y you know, it would be better to be more simple. Look at that. Much better design. You feel me? More simple design and less normy mouth breathers going... I saw that on HBO. I, I'm a Star Trek fan. Which of the J.J. Abrams movie Star Trek is your favorite? Uh, they should have made Sulu a woman so she could have a Kirkhanna. That's you. Jacques Whipped into my fucking frenzy. I promise I won't get all political two years later. One Red Bull later. Do, do, do. Yeah, orange. I just want to see the damn conclusion to the rebuild movies. I don't know what that means. Uh, what watch are you wearing? Can't see it. My Casio G-Shock eventually ran out of batteries. I keep getting meaning to get it replaced, but I ended up getting the famous Al-Qaeda watch. I'm not even making this up. If you look up what the Al-Qaeda watch is, for some reason Al-Qaeda overwhelmingly preferred this because they're simple designs that are relatively rugged. They last forever, and apparently you can wire up bombs with them because of they're, they're just that simple. It's, it's a battery and a little computer board with like a little, you know, Peter pair of wiring. And uh, anyway, it worked pretty well. It does have some scuffs on the face of it because it isn't a G-Shock. Um, it has some scuffs from me doing some rock climbing, but, uh, you know, whatever. I'm not a fancy guy anymore. Whatever works, works. And I'm like Chris McCandles, I am definitely trying to reduce my possessions and I'm trying to simplify my life. Uh, I also realized that my loadout for hiking is what is considered an ultralight, which is cool. Uh, I wish that that hammock was comfier. And I, there is a hammock review coming. I might have to do some finishing thoughts on that, record some finishing thoughts, because I've not, I might not have been sleeping in it correctly. How do you fuck up sleeping in a hammock? I don't know. I figured it out. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. don't watch Game of Thrones. I've, it's been, I've been a massive fan for years, but knowing how it wraps up, you'd be in, investing a lot of time for it all to fall about the last three seasons. Look, I tried to watch six episodes in. Some butcher's kid pushes the prince kid down, and he throws a hissy fit, and the butcher's son gets killed. And my thought process behind that, because I am not a beta, is uh, there's somebody that I could already hear somebody going, yeah, you are. I'm like, fuck you. Um, is, well, then the kid should not have stopped. He should have pushed the kid to the ground and bit, like, just beaten the king's son until he was fucking dead. You see that? See, that's, not, that's not called submission to feudalism or tyrants. That's called give me liberty or give me fucking death. Like fucking Thomas Jefferson. What is the, what is the, but what is it that we have lost but a few, the blood of a few patriots and the blood of tyrants, which waters the tree of fucking liberty? Uh, so one of my favorite, um, I think it was in Romance of the Three Kingdoms, one of my favorite political, and this was a true story, this is like in the Chinese history books, there were some men who were walking, because they were supposed to report to either the emperor or a prison camp, I can't remember, I think it was a prison camp. Well, if they were to show up late, they were going to get killed, that was the, pu the punishment. The punishment was death. So... They ended up being held up for rain, and while they're camping in the rain, they decided, well, we're already dead, essentially. Camera cuts, all of a sudden, they're attacking the prison camp, killing the guards, liberating the prisoners, making a bushwhacking army out of fucking prisoners, and they actually absorbed that entire kingdom. They seized control of that fucking kingdom. Uh, that is fucking amazing. After that, 
the imperial uh, Chinese had like, you know, a like Confucius saying about essentially don't make a penalty for an infraction, death, because you are invoking, you are provo provoking your opponent to simply just ride out and kill you. I feel like we could all use to do some push-ups and alpha up and uh, take take some take some take some some Chinese history lessons to heart. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I, I can't do Game of Thrones. It's feudal fucking porn. I hate that shit. I hate that shit. I, it's. I, I, I think I said this before, but I, I literally, my mother was watching Downton Abbey, and I, I literally just couldn't take their feudalistic European shit anymore. I couldn't listen to any. They had many chests with it, and the Conan's with the fist, and no, the second day, two fortnight. I can't fucking take that shit. I'm an American. I'm a fucking cowboy. Fuck that noise. You know what I mean? Where is my firefly? If someone tries to kill you, you just go ahead and you try to kill them right back. Fucking ain't right. Of the, of course, the first thing I hear when coming into a Tolstoy stream about shirts is him talking about history. Yes, yes, this is about shirts. See, see, this is how how, how I do. And if someone says, "Hey, you're a, a political dissident," I can say, "No, I'm talking about t-shirts. It's fucking innocent. I'm just saying, you know, it's just it's the t-shirts. I'm not talking about rising up and you know, overthrowing the government. I'm talking about fucking t-shirts. Come on, man. You you the one who got us out of this is you started talking about it. I wasn't. I wasn't talking about anarchy, I think. All right, next next fucking shirt. We're going to exhaust the shirts. I got to, it's been an hour. I think my shit's dry. I only meant to do this for a half hour. I didn't think anyone would show up. I didn't think Max was going to be here. Oh. And it's not even too, oh, it's a little sun damaged. Sun damaged on the edge. We're gonna get this shit together. Pack up all this stuff. Okay, three, two, one, let's jam. Okay. Cowboy Bebop was the greatest fucking anime that's ever made. If you disagree, you're a fucking weeb and a dark. You're a fucking weeb. This shit was great. That new fucking, I don't know if you have seen the, um, if you've seen what they're gonna do to it, they're making a live action Netflix. Yeah, those have always been successful in the past. Fucking kill me now. And uh, I, I swear to God, we've already had... So if anyone's familiar with the scene, um, Boondocks. Uh, they're also going to try to bring Boondocks back. And uh, if uh, Aaron Magruder is not directing, I'm not down. You ruined the fourth season of that shit. Because you're greedy assholes who took him off the project to work on The Adventures of Black Jesus, which was a shitty live-action show because you spam shitty live-action shows. Because even though you're called Adult Swim and you may cut your teeth on adult animation, you can't pay any money for it because you're cheap bastards. So you think that by cheapening the product, you'll be able to be successful, but uh, people stop fucking tuning in when they realize that Tom Goes to the Mayor played over and fucking over and over and over and over again was the only fucking thing you were going to show, and you also alienated your entire anime fan bases, you fucking assholes. Anyway, uh, the scene in the boondocks where he's writing the adventures of, ironically, Black Jesus, um, the, the, the play that Huey is putting on, and the principal comes in and he's just, I just reviewed the script, most of it looks good, continuity error on page two, and Jesus can't be black. And Huey just kind of goes, what do you mean Jesus can't be black? He's like, like I mean, he, we can't make Jesus black. And one of the other yes men, it was a woman, says, we could make him Italian, what about Asian? And she just keeps on trying to change it. And he's like, but Jesus was black. And he just needs to make it his thing, and they just have to fuck with it. So I've already seen these reports coming out, but they're going to take Ayn, the Pembroke Corgi, who is uh, essentially the, the, you know, the, the rep for the show, the, the anime, the, what's the word called, mascot for the show. And uh, they're going to, they're going to make it a husky. There's literally no need. You just like changing it. There, me and a friend have a theory that literally these people who are taking over all these reboots and all these remakes have a fetish of destroying the thing that is beloved and then insulting the fan bases and calling them, you know, man children, nerds, and racist, and sex every time that they degrade and defile something beloved. Uh, and um, I hope that these people end up homeless. Uh, I hope they learn to fucking code, because otherwise you're going to be doing some interesting things on the streets. I, wanted, wanted, I really wanted to say what you were going to be doing, but no. Great t-shirt design, by the way. Simplistic front. Looks fucking decent. Nice and clean. And what's on the back? a more detailed representation of what the show is about. This is actually one of my favorite fucking t-shirts. Oh no, and I remember, yeah, had a little armpit hole. Had a little pit, huh? Get your pit, huh? All right, see what we get. Yeah, okay, so right, Mark's already kind of figured it out. Sleep in the hammock at an angle. 
That's what multiple people have said. I really hope you're right. That shit better fucking change. It better be like, ding, like I put my fucking head down and it's now amazing because I did not sleep twice in a row. And I really, really need this hammock to work out so I can continue to have sick house adventures in the wild so I don't go crazy and kill people. Of course, I wouldn't do that. Because uh, cause, uh, it's wrong to do, to do. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's wrong. Yeah, got it, got it. Do, 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 do. I think I missed a lot of comments. Hang on. Do, 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 do. Oh, Jesus. God, I missed a lot of comments, man. I was going full Jones for a minute. Uh, of course. So, have you played the newest Hitman for PS4? No, I never liked the Hitman series. I don't have anything against it. Uh, I do kind of have a problem playing a bad guy in a video game. I don't know what it is. I never liked the Grand Theft Auto series. I'm averse to being an asshole, probably because I don't watch Game of Thrones. I don't I don't jerk off to the idea that I'm a Machiavellian. Ooh, I'm going to sneaky. I'm going to fucking pull one over on everybody else. Like, you know, there have been multiple times in my life where I had the capacity to, uh, you know, like fuck somebody's significant you know, other or fuck around behind my significant other. And I chose not to do that. And I feel like society really looked down on me. You know what I mean? And for the longest time, I think I tried to be more of a chaotic, neutral person. You know what I mean? In order to fit this thing that society was saying, you're a loser if you're not this person. And ironically, this is a weird story and I won't get too far into it, but a really, really long running Vampires the Masquerade campaign convinced me that that's not the fucking way to be. You know what I mean? I finally realized... If you're letting older vampires, older elder dark vampires with their systems of control tell you who you are, then you're just as weak as they say you're actually being. I would rather be a nice person and not give a fuck what anybody thinks about me and go, yep, you can sit and spin if you don't fucking like it. You know what I mean? Rather than conform to being this bad boy stereotype that people will think, you know, will think more highly of you for. Fuck that noise. You know what I mean? You know what my shit is? Go watch God Bless America. That speech in the end. You've lost your kindness. You've lost your soul. That fucking shit. I'm going to rewatch that and get drunk. Maybe I'll just rewatch it. God, I want to get drunk right now. Woo! But I'm already getting ranty and ravey. So let's not, let's not do that. Uh, make conspiracy vids already, Tolstoy. No. Do you, you ever want to see my ass again? Already, like, YouTube is going now. Uh, if any video uh, does not align with the state... Oops, no. Uh, the state, sorry, I'm just, I'm trying to measure out my, it's the state run. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, no, man, they'll disappear my ass fast. Hells to the Nizzo. Fuck that. I, I don't do conspiracy. We haven't been talking about conspiracies. We've been talking about t-shirts. Shut the fuck up. Why are you doing this to me? Haven't I been good to you? Haven't Uncle Tolstoy been good to you? Um, yeah, me too. Anna was busy with Shin, so it's understandable. Okay, there's two people talking about an animo that I don't know anything about. So, you know, I, I'm going to skip. All right. I don't think it was Descartes. I'm pretty sure it was Rousseau. All right, man. You know, I don't know all them old fucking, you know, that shit. Look, man, I'm a, dime, I'm, a, I'm a wannabe dime store intellectual, man. You don't tune into Tolstoy for accuracy. I'm the kind of fucker who, like, makes a review of the, the Second No Man. And it's like, eh, I think it came out in 2001. Anyway, these graphics look like dog shit. <laughs> like, that's what they do. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it funny, Steven. Let's keep it going. I really dug Shin Gojira. Oh, my God, more anime talk of that. I don't know shit about, man. I'm, I'm not that deep into the anime. Loved Lost 2. Excellent. Mark, you're a fucking saint. Got to binge watch on Netflix due to missing a while in syndication. Hell yeah. I mean, the ending was fucking god awful. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say it was good, but all right. Um, do, do, do. I wasn't prepared to learn that much about the Japanese politics in the Godzilla movie. Are you for real? Does it, like, does it have like a whole chapter in this remake of Godzilla where it's like, and now time to talk about the relationship between the parliament and the emperor. And I'm just like, oh, okay, fine. Fuck it. Let's, let's learn that shit. Awesome. One of my favorite Casios. I'm a watch lover, so I gotta ask. Yeah, man, I used to be big into watches. I used to be a big watch nerd. I was big into these, you know, these really um, these fancy watches. But now, nah, then I got, then I got active, and you know, it's like you can't be wearing your, you know, Seiko Solar watch, you know, while you're rock climbing. It's just not a good idea. Uh, bump, 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 bump. Ever watch the classic anime Berserk? No, but fucking Sam won't leave me alone about it. He keeps on wanting me to watch Berserk. Uh. I liked it too. KOTM is okay. I don't know what that's about. Have you seen the show Turn based off of the book of Washington Spies? I have not. How old? How's the old mandolin? Uh, it's okay. Uh, it needs to be tuned, and I'm bad at that. 
and I haven't picked it up in a long time. I don't know, man. I'm not good at music. It's not what I want to put my XP into. I just, I wish it was easier, but I'm lazy, you know? All right. This is the second to last shirt. Oh, shit. We're really getting down in it. So speaking of the boondocks, boondocks. You got that shit right. What does it say? Say it with me. Say it loudly. Say it proudly. Excuse me, ev everyone. Uh, I have a brief an announcement uh, to make. Jesus was black. Ronald Reagan was the devil. And the government is lying to you about 9-11. Thank you for your time. Thank you. That was a conspiracy theory. I'm reading a t-shirt, bro. Oh my god, this was the perfect fucking shirt for this shit. Ah, damn. So I wore this to church once. And uh, I wore, like, a flannel over top of it. And this kid was like, why, why do you have that shirt? I think I've seen that on uh, that, that late-night adult show. Is that okay to wear? I was like, I don't know, man. I turned around and flipped my shirt down. And he read that. And he immediately grabbed the side of my shirt and moved it. back. he was like, no. <laughs> and just he, like, corrected. He's like, that's not. This is not the place for that. We don't want to fucking hear about that shit. You know that the Boondocks is, um, he's from Maryland. I mean, he was, like, born in Chicago. And he read, he's like, I'm from Chicago. Oh, fucker, you were raised in Maryland and you went to University of Maryland. Go fucking Terps! You were published first in the University of Maryland fucking, you know, the, the daily, whatever the fuck it's called, the newspaper that they had. He's 100% Maryland. Woodcrest is, is actually, it's called Woodcrest, Maryland, and it's I think it's like in Crownsville. I'm really certain, so. Oh, yeah. That's some good shit. All right. Do, do, do. See you, Space Tolstoy. Fucking A. I wonder, do I have... I think there was one of my journals that I ended it with an homage to that. Yep, there's, there's the, the, the ending to a Cowboy Bebop manga. Yep, and then there's that. See you, Space Cowboy. I was smoking back then, so that was me. That was a silhouette of me smoking. Smoking is insanely bad for you. I recently found out through one of these live commenters on this live stream that I got a dose of fucking radiation from smoking that shit because of industrial chemicals that are radioactive. Yay! See, to clear it up, Tolstoy, Rebuild is a remake of Neon Genesis Evangelion in the form of movies. Anno has been working on it for a long time. Now, I've never seen Evangelion. Uh, I feel like it's one of those mech animes that isn't Gurren Lagann. Yeah, buddy. You see what I did? You see what I did there? Ho, ho, another classic stream. Hello, Mr. Jeffsky. Hello, Mr. Shagster. Jake Nutter says, that website we do not mention, Tolstoy. I don't know what that means. I don't get it. Are you saying that's I'm from that website? I don't get it. Uh... Someone can finger your pen. Okay, you're a fucking weird person. Uh, on that theory, do some research on the Toxoplasma gone deal. Okay, will do. I, big curve to learning. I don't know what that means. Uh, I have seen, okay, I'm just gonna like scroll down these because a lot of these are kind of my own sequitur. Have you seen Neon Genesis Evangelion? No, I've not seen Neon Genesis Evangelion. It is not during the gone. I don't watch a lot of anime. When I do, I either like it or I don't. And it's really hard to get me to like one for some reason. Turn is a revel revelatory, revelatory war, revelatory war series worth a watch. Re revelatory? I think it's hard, man. Lol, we still going hiking this summer, man. If you want, yes, actually, there's there's some states that are on the border of North and South Carolina. Some states. <laughs> there's some parks that are on the border of North and South Carolina, Clive. So if you want to fucking meet me, we'll go. Actually, Crowder's Mountain is at the corner of South Carolina and North Carolina. It's nice. So, hey, meet me out there some. Played any new games recently, Tolstoy? I hope Naughty Dog doesn't ruin Last of Us 2. What do you mean, hope they don't? What makes you think they haven't? Did you watch Space Dandy, Tolstoy? No. Fan of the old Tenchu games on PS1 and 2? No. Revolutionary. Sorry. Much stream, very long, too many t-shirts. Also... Can't wear this shirt. It's probably the only shirt that didn't get damaged by sun rays for some reason because the way it was sitting. Foxhound says special forces. There are actual special forces people in my area, and I don't want to get the it's my stolen valor. I swear to God, there's everybody's offended, even if they're in the military. You would think that they would make them big burly men that wouldn't give a fuck what anyone thinks, but goddamn, are people offended all the time, always, all the time because it's current year. Anyway, going on for a while, I will probably leave this up. Um, you know, make sure to bear in mind that I, I will be probably posting a, I'll probably post a quick, what fucking fell? Oh, God damn it, Gordon Freeman. 
Let's get the shit out of me. I will probably be posting a little, you know, warning whenever I'm about to go live on this one so I can get more than 25 people in the goddamn room. So, I'll be doing a live unboxing of the Spyro Fig. Uh, it was sent to me by a very good fucking friend. And uh, I think that's pretty much all we're going to do for now. No joke. I've seen a bunch of old graphic tees from once this one's this five in a bin in my closet somewhere. Oh, snap, Spyro. Indeed, oh, snap, Spyro. Uh, stay tuned. Every time you see a notification, ring the stupid bell, press the button, like the shit, spread it on your Facebook, as much notoriety as I can get, because it's the only reason why I keep doing this shit. And more and more, they are rigging the numbers against anyone who isn't, well, actually, old stream media. It's not even YouTubers anymore. It's not even, like, certain YouTubers. It's all YouTubers versus them now. So let's keep it together, people. And let's not go crazy. I think we all need to remember what made the Jones crazy.